Now, this is breaking news from WCCO. Hello, we have some breaking news right now. A jury has reached a verdict in the shooting death of a baseball coach and father along Highway 169. They found Jamal Smith guilty on all counts, murder, aiding and abetting murder, and weapons charges. Smith is from Chicago. Earlier this week, he told jurors he was driving an SUV down Highway 169, but he claimed somebody else killed Jay Bouton. Bouton got into an argument with someone on the highway. Prosecutors say it was Smith and that he pulled out a gun and shot Bouton in Plymouth last summer. Jonah Kaplan has been covering this trial for us and he's live at the Hennepin County Courthouse. Jonah, what do you what can you tell us? Well, 16 hours of deliberations over three days and for the Bouton family, this is worth the wait. It is the verdict that they wanted. It is the verdict that prosecutors had been pushing for. Clearly, Jamal Smith, even on the stand, testifying under oath that he did not pull the trigger, the jury clearly not buying that argument. This was a highly emotional case. And in the courtroom today, the family letting out even more emotions when the jury and then the judge read that verdict and then polled each of the jury members. Automatically, it means that Jamal Smith will be spending the rest of his life in prison, though formal sentencing will happen at a later date. The argument all along from prosecutors was that the evidence showed not only was Jamal Smith the driver of the SUV where the fatal shot came from, but Jamal Smith, even in the driver's seat, was the person who had a gun, stuck his hand out across the passenger seat, through the window, into that next car where Jay Bounton was driving, pulled that trigger and shot and killed him. They used evidence from forensic investigators showing that Jamal Smith and the gun residue was actually in the front seat area. There were pictures of Smith on his Facebook on his Facebook profile, social media profiles from that day, July 6, 2021, showing him holding a 45 caliber weapon. The cartridge that was recovered was a 45 caliber cartridge. Obviously, this again a very emotional case. We're awaiting for all the family and prosecutors to come down now for Smith's defense. Obviously, very disappointing. They tried unsuccessfully to plant some doubt that Smith was the driver. There were three passengers in that vehicle. All three of them had guns. The challenge for the prosecution was to prove that it was Smith who pulled the trigger, who took that fatal shot, and not the the other passengers. So obviously, this is something again uh, very. Fulfilling, I think, may, might be the appropriate word for the family. Now, hopefully, they can find some closure, though grief will never have an expiration date for this family. But at least they're going to move on now to the next stage in their mourning. And Jonah, did the judge say anything about when that sentencing date will be? No, they're going to actually just be meeting next week to go over further dates. But we know in automatic in Minnesota statutes that you're convicted of first degree murder. You are spending the rest of your life in prison. And Jonah, what can you tell us about being inside the courtroom? What was the the emotion like in in the courtroom today? It's a release of a lot of tension. It's a release of a lot of emotions. You're, you're trying to prepare yourself for whatever the jury may be. And yesterday, after about 10 to 12 hours of deliberations, the jury coming back with a note to the judge saying, you know, we're, we've reached a consensus on two of the three counts. The one that they had not was murder. That was the most significant charge. We just mentioned again, if you're convicted of first degree murder, you're spending your whole life in prison. Yes, it's very possible that Smith could have been convicted of the weapons charge of just the aiding and abetting murder, but that would not carry as severe a penalty. So you're watching in the courtroom, you're seeing the brother-in-law, you're seeing the wife of Jay Bouton, the kids. We did not see Harrison, who was in the car with him, who testified about the crash on the second day of the, the first day of the trial, excuse me, that was happening last week. Uh, you just see a lot of people supporting the family as well. This is a family that's been like many in Minnesota. They have deep roots here. They have been here for many generations. They all grew up at the same high school. They have friends coming to support them. Obviously, it was just a release and a relief, I think, for a lot of people today. Jonah, you've been there for us through, the, through it all. Thank you so much. We'll keep an eye out on any upcoming press conferences and we'll continue to update you on WCCO.com and CBS News Minnesota. Stay with us all afternoon and for our newscast tonight at 5 o'clock.